Welcome to Agile to Agility Podcast with Milan Bayic. Major show alert. The very first value we wrote is individuals and interactions. Let's take this to another level. Like we have projects and we know uh, our deadlines and how about our life? Mm-hmm. So I set my deadline there. So I know exactly how many hours, how many months, how many years that I have left. And then I can prioritize what I want to do for my life. Who is Dam Mongol Hong Chai? Start with that. <laughs> <laughs> Dam is a human. And he is a happy human. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And Great. Yeah, actually, I uh, I worked as a mechanical engineer before moving to the U.S. Mm-hmm. I worked in Thailand 11 years. So six years, I was, a, I was a mechanical engineer. And then I moved to be a human resource development manager. So I'm from the two worlds of uh machines and mm-hmm. human mm-hmm. so how yeah. do you like when you say um human development manager what does that really mean in, in your context uh i design courses workshops mm-hmm. uh to develop uh, new engineers new mm-hmm. technicians or even people who have a lot of experience at my uh, company and I took care of the whole uh, employee development systems. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, it's, so it's really in developing um, both the human side of things as well as uh, obviously the process and that whole side of things. Yeah. Um, yeah. I know you recently, we talked maybe a couple of months ago or exchanged emails and uh, uh, you moved uh, from Thailand. You were in Thailand for, I think, uh, uh-huh. a lot of COVID uh, during the last year, and then you came uh-huh. back. So, what are you up to currently? What are you, what are you doing? Now we're in Portland, Oregon. Yeah, I became a full-time PhD student at Portland State University. My major is in um, engineering and technology management, and now I'm interested in organizational change management. So Mm -hmm. I see change is the truth of life. Mm -hmm. It's everywhere and it will be forever with our life and even our business. So I think change is really basic, classic Mm -hmm. and challenging. Um, (laughs) I'm really into it. How to help myself first to Mm -hmm. change myself to be a better dam every morning, every day that I have a the bread of quality of my life to wake up every day. So I want to be a better down first. And then I have energy, especially positive energy to help to support other people to change to be a better, a better day, a better them. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Well, that is awesome. And like, you know, when, when it comes to change, I mean, we talk a lot about change. We talk about changing people, changing culture, changing, you know, systems. Uh, yeah. What do you think, you know, looking at your um, uh, background, and I, what I'd like to get to also is uh, uh, them as a monk, uh, <laughs> and how you got into that. But maybe uh, just looking at change, like why do, uh, from your perspective, why do we resist change? Why do we sometimes welcome change? as humans and uh, what is your thought on that uh, aspect when it comes to change? Yeah, uh, change is real, change, even though change is the truth of life, but mm-hmm. some changes are really painful for us. Mm-hmm. We don't really practice or prepare ourselves to confront uh, those changes. For example, what if, I do, or uh, what if you do? If you, if you lose your loved ones mm-hmm. in this evening, I ask myself. I think ten years ago, after I lost three friends, mm-hmm. like three months, three months, three months, and I ask myself, 
what if my mom died? That's, that would be such a big change of my life. And then my friend invited me to uh, a temple. It's a forest temple. I went there every week and three months. And then I made a decision to be a monk. I don't know why the temple always uh, introduced me to uh, death videos almost every evening. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't tell I didn't tell the temple what my objective was that I came to the temple almost every weekend but mm-hmm. kind of like someone there know, knew about my purpose and then I watched videos of death often and then I got used to it mm-hmm. you know what after being a monk I think 40 days and then I uh, came back to work Mm-hmm. Three years later, my mom died. Like I talked to her in the morning, mm-hmm. in the afternoon, in the evening, and asked her, "Hey, have you had dinner yet?" And she said, "No, I'm going to see a doctor." Ten minutes later, I got a call from my brother. Oh, my mom is dying. How should I do? Wow. I didn't cry. Mm-hmm. I was really. Uh, conscious and made a decision to let her go. I mm-hmm. took a bus back home. I didn't cry at all. But when I saw my my mom's body, I cried, but not that much, because mm-hmm. I knew exactly that it would happen so uh soon or later. Mm-hmm. So change is with us. Is with us all the time. Yeah. It How looks can like, we adapt? you know, just, I mean, and thank you for sharing that. Uh, it looks like you embraced, um, embraced the change, right? You didn't run from it. You weren't scared of it. Uh, mm-hmm. You knew that it was coming. We all know it's coming, but a lot of times uh, we're afraid of the un- unknowns. And I think, you know, when we resist the, resist the change, it has to do, I think, with what you just said, consciousness, as far as how conscious we are about that change and also our fear towards the unknown. And uh, mm-hmm. maybe that, you know, once we uh, are okay with the unknown, maybe we're okay with the change. I don't know. But uh, th- that is a really, really touching and interesting <laughs> point that just made me think and my uh, thoughts are going in, all, uh, in, in a couple of different directions as far as that. Um, so when it comes to consciousness, I mean, you know, in meditation, like, you know, a lot of times it's lost on many of us and especially being in a busy world. And I think uh, you did a talk, not, no, I don't think, I know you did a talk. I wasn't there for Agile 2021. Um, it, it was called Come Learn from an Agilist Thai Monk, Stop Burning uh-huh. the Candle uh, Both Ends. Um, could you maybe elaborate on, on your talk and uh, what what were some of the key messages uh, from that talk? Yeah, the key message is take care of your life. Your life is really short. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, after, be, after being a monk, I learned a lot about being conscious. And yeah, after my mom died, yeah, I worked really, actually, I worked, I have been working really hard since I was a child. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I worked really hard to get to this point. 11 years that I worked in Thailand, I did many, many things for my family members. And after my mom died, I made a decision to move to study English first in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. And I got a master's degree. And after that, I, want, I really wanted to, to be someone in agile communities Mm -hmm. i got many problems i got many bullies i got many resistance from many people who didn't who didn't really want me to be here with you guys Mm -hmm. so i worked very hard to get to where i wanted to be and then i travel around the world to see agile yeah i became sick of anxiety attacks mm-hmm. that just I, too much it was too much to handle or yeah. too, too much to handle too much stress 
to mm-hmm. much energy that I gave to other people, but I didn't have energy left for myself. I lost all confidence. Everything like gone from mm-hmm. my body. My friend told me like, I didn't see even damn spirit at all. Yeah. I sat, I sat on the beach like this. <laughs> I saw you. I mean, over the years, as I told you before we started recording, I saw like just how much you were doing, how much you were involved. But I would also uh, argue that you got a lot of love. I mean, like when I talk to certain people and like people that support you in community, like I think the way that so- some people, uh, I well, I only saw the positive side. Let me put it that way. I didn't see all the stuff that you probably endured. But there are a lot, a lot of people. I think that also showed you love and uh, uh, really embraced you. Um, yeah. Would you think? Would you say that's correct, or that it was a mixture right. of both? Yeah. Um, I think many people really welcome me to agile communities, mm-hmm. and just feel pe- a few people they bully me they try to drag me down and mm-hmm. uh people who, who love me to support me saw saw me and then they send me messages direct to my inbox yeah. even some people my many many people invited me to to their home wow. yeah like my 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 friend in uh, washington dc Corey, he invited me to stay with uh, his family wow. yeah for almost a week i think and many yeah. people show me their love they support me and i feel like wow thank you so much yeah 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 even that you a... <laughs> i mean yeah, it is great you. And I, again you know this yeah. is also like uh the way that you know i guess you know you can always see but maybe to come back a little bit more to your talk and uh you know yeah. uh burning the candles oh. <laughs> on both ends yeah um what else i mean how did you get out of it like in a sense like how did you um get out of that uh you know i'm assuming it's some kind of depression yeah. something with, you know energy type of drain uh how did you get, get back uh at it because recently i saw you doing all kinds of stuff and i want you to talk about that too where you were entertaining people uh and uh, some of the stuff the pictures that you're taking um <laughs> so what did it take i mean to get back into it to enjoy i think one of the things you said you didn't enjoy training anymore it wasn't fun it wasn't so what did you do to get back into it? I took a break two weeks yeah. and then I stay in a resort. Uh, it's very, it was very quiet for me. So I, I became with myself 100%. Yeah, yeah, like come here, don't send your mind anywhere else. Come back to your breath. Yeah, yeah come back to your breath. Your life is too short. And I asked myself like, what I want to do next. Mm-hmm. That's pirat- That's prioritization, right? Exactly. Yeah. You, you're you're the product here. owner. You're the product owner of your own life, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I, and then I prioritize what I want to do by using this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a Kanban. Like this is my personal Kanban notebook that I yeah. use it. Um, yeah, I I still use it, even though it's kind of like yeah, ugly, but I really yeah. like it. <laughs> it's practical, <laughs> because, right? Yeah, and after prioritize, after prioritizing what I want to do in my life, because now I have only forty years left in this world. Mm-hmm. Now I'm forty one years old, and I believe that I will die at the age of eighty years old. So I have only 39 years left. So I want to make so sure So you that... know exactly in a, in a year where you think you'll die? Yes, of course. Yeah. How, yeah. how do you know that? <laughs> I set my mind there. Yeah. Okay. So oh, that's a goal. When... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the deadline of a project, right? Yeah. Like we have projects and mm-hmm. we know uh, our deadlines. And how about our life? Mm-hmm. So I set my deadline there. So I know exactly how many hours, how many months, how many years that I have left. And then I can prioritize what I want to do for my life. So you're time boxing your life in a way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then I can focus. 
I've never, I've never uh, heard anybody say that, but even if it's hypothetically speaking, right? Let's just say, even if it's not, just putting, putting sense of, uh, sense of urgency, sense, that time box, the saying in, in your mind, you know, as you know, it plays <laughs> games in your mind, like just knowing that there is limit, <laughs> that it's not forever, that there is uh, that mark at some point, whatever it is. Um, that's very interesting, and thank you for sharing. Uh, that, that's that, that. That just again uh, made me think of a bunch of different things that you know. On my end, <laughs> I should be probably just at least contemplating about. Um, what about uh, becoming a, a CST and training uh, with uh, Jeff Sutherland? What was your journey to become a Scrum trainer? Sorry, I said CST, but Scrum trainer. Uh, with Scrum Inc. And uh, it looks like Scrum Inc. and Jeff embraced you. Um, and uh, I'm interested because a lot of times, you know, uh, I'm familiar with uh, with Scrum.org. I'm familiar with, you know, obviously being a CST through uh, Scrum Alliance. But what was that experience uh, working, collaborating with Scrum Inc.? Uh, and how did yeah. you get into that? I'm assuming you took <laughs> maybe Jeff's class or I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, the new best uh, name of uh, being a trainer there, we just got a this name, yeah. a registered uh, Scrum trainer. Registered Scrum yeah. trainer. So yeah, RST. RST. Yeah. Yes, RST. <laughs> yeah, with Scrum okay. Inc. I got to do many, 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 many things. They, yeah. they count, they counted everything that I have done in the past. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all experiences. Yeah, I think on the day one that they knew me that I joined, a uh, product owner's certification um what is that CSPO. CSPO. Yeah. yeah at tesla with jeff mm -hmm. and then i told my and then i told myself like oh i want to be a trainer and then i went <laughs> to ask jeff jeff i want to be a trainer yeah the first <laughs> person in thailand could you help me please mm -hmm. <laughs> he didn't say anything i think no one want no one wants to commit, right? It's yeah. hard. It's hard to get it. And I, after that, I researched. Oh, there is no. There was no, uh, the scrum guy in Thai. So I asked mm -hmm. Jeff. Hey Jeff, I want to. I want to transfer the scrum guy to Thai. Yeah. And then he said, "Okay, let me. Uh, let me ask Ken." Both of yeah. them said yes, and I started from there. That's okay. the first piece of, uh, being a, a trainer. Yeah. So they counted from, I think they counted from that day that I translated the Scrum Guide, uh, the 2017 version for the first mm -hmm. time. And I did for the second time for the 2020 uh, version. Mm -hmm. And I joined his workshops. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Scrum at scale. And I had to produce uh, real experiences, real successful cases, even mm -hmm. failed cases and then <laughs> yeah. i reported back yeah to jeff yeah reported back to jeff what i what i did i reported back yeah i at that time i just wanted to share my experiences with jeff yeah <laughs> what yeah. was his what was his response like how did he respond to to your case studies and experiences um jeff uh uh you know you know conference in his session yeah. and then he he thought of my uh case study and then he looked at me and then he talked about my case study wow. that made me so happy yeah. and he told and he told people in sessions about my case study and then he asked me to tell people there yeah so for me that is awesome like, yeah yeah, he remember me. <laughs> and, that, and that's important. I mean, like, yeah, it's just yeah. especially uh, and uh, kudos to you. You did also uh, some co-trainings with Jeff, right? Yeah. And yeah. how did that? Uh, I mean, I attended the one of Jeff's trainings too, and it's interesting. And I've seen him also co-train. How was that experience for you to co-train with Jeff Sutherland? First, uh, my, my dream became true. Mm -hmm. uh, even though many people say like it's unbelievable but for me I could say that it's believable because because I plan for that mm -hmm. I plan for that 
Yeah. And when I got uh, the invitation from Scrum Inc., kind of like, wow. <laughs> First, wow. And after that, I was nervous. <laughs> and then I had to ask for uh, learning materials, mm-hmm. training materials, as well as everything that I had to prepare myself before flying from Bangkok to Boston. When I got there, my heart like... <laughs> <laughs> so you were I, I thought you were in San Francisco but you, that was a long flight uh, yeah. and, and time difference and then yeah yeah and Jeff was really cheerful was really supportive I still mm-hmm. had I still had many questions I asked him in details and he answered all questions even yeah. small numbers mm-hmm. and I asked him for feedback what could I do better I, I presented in the morning on the first day and then I asked him for feedback what I could do better in mm-hmm. the afternoon. And he told me, uh, I love your energy, Darm. <laughs> uh, and it would be better uh, if you worked on your pronunciation. Mm-hmm. I didn't practice after that. I was really quiet, tried to work with myself inside didn't mm-hmm. practice about pronunciation at all mm-hmm. but i believed him and then in the afternoon and on the second day uh i presented again yeah for my parts yeah and then i went back to ask him yeah could you please give me feedback or tell me about my pronunciation and he said it's much more <laughs> easy to understand you yeah, yeah in the afternoon and on the second day wow so that was uh, that was uh, immediate improvement or uh, and that's you know I, I think you know a lot of trainers do and it's something but maybe for some that are not listening it, it, it's that it's always opportunity to improve and it's never too early to ask for feedback so even at the you know lunch for of, of day one of two day training asking for feedback and then improving for the second part of the day is uh really good that's uh, that's my uh what that's my way when i uh train people even three hours mm-hmm. i ask for feedback after the first session one and a half hours mm-hmm. to make sure that uh the second part one and a half hours left mm-hmm. they will be happy with me so i don't wait until i finish my uh, workshop to ask for feedback because the feedback that I get at the last moment is useless. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, for, yeah, it's too late people, already. For, right? yeah. <laughs> yeah, for, pe- for people who are with me now, mm-hmm. nothing is early for me, but everything, feedback is a gift. Mm-hmm. So I can adjust immediately yeah, with my clients who are in front of me now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What are some of the, I mean, like you've done, I agree, like at least, uh, you know, with energy wise and what I've seen, um, we've never met in person, but what I've just seen through your posts and, you know, uh, I, <laughs> like you've done some crazy stuff where you're DJing, where you're, I think you were DJing or something. <laughs> you were, so could you maybe talk about some of the stuff uh, that you've done? I also wanted to maybe talk about just crazy stuff that you've done during the training to, to entertain people first. <laughs> <laughs> Like this what is that yeah. it's like oh the light <laughs> yeah i even have lights here yeah <laughs> yeah so uh online training is difficult mm-hmm. and at the same time it's boring yeah how to how to make sure that people are with me 100 percent no no with me yeah just only with me Make sure that they are with me consciously. Yeah. Consciously, right? <laughs> consciously, so, correct, yeah. Yeah, consciously. Uh, when you listen to other people, you might, even though you are doing nothing, but actually you are sending your mind somewhere else. You are mm-hmm. not with those people 100%. So I just want to make sure that people are having fun with me first and then they feel like they are they feel 
they are feeling relaxed. Mm-hmm. And, and that probably that they want to be there, right? Yeah, they want to see something entertainment before <laughs> studying. I yeah. don't want to make people stress. Yeah, <laughs> and then they will close everything. They don't listen to me. They even close their ears. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what other things do you do? I mean, like I agree, online training is uh, you know completely different. And even uh-huh. though I've done online training before COVID, uh, not to the extent where I've done it now for almost two years uh-huh. or a year and a half. Um, what other things do you find helpful to do during the trainings? Um, uh, yeah, I first I dress up in many themes. Yeah. <laughs> I dress up in many themes, being a monk, being the liberty of what is that in new york yeah statue of liberty yes <laughs> harry potter a yeah. rock star <laughs> and i got like uh disco lights yeah i danced yeah in front of uh people and when like people are like what is what is going on and then they just <laughs> leave everything and then focus on what I'm going to do and then they are ready to study with me mm-hmm. besides uh, dressing up I like uh, doing like games mm-hmm. yeah so I, I don't lecture yeah yeah I don't lecture people I just hey here choices you have to select like a, like questions questionnaire mm-hmm. and then they learn from reading by themselves and mm-hmm. they learn from uh making mistakes when they answer uh, incorrectly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah that, that's, uh, that's something that definitely, I think even when we go back, I think uh, 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 teaching online has uh, opened the doors, opened my eyes to some of the things that I would want to do when we go back um, to uh, in-person. And uh, I think, you know, definitely uh, there were a lot of exercises in, in, in uh, in-person classes, but I think, you know, I'm, you know, how do we combine the online tools and in-person yeah. tools and how, so it, it's, uh, it's been, uh, it's been interesting from that uh, uh, standpoint, but what about like, you've done, like you've helped people like <laughs> understand agile and cooking, agile and drawing, gardening, agile working. Could you maybe talk about uh, at least what I have in my head is when you did agile cooking, I think in San Francisco or something like that, or in, <laughs> uh, could you talk about you know, how did you come up with those ideas? Was just opportunities that presented themselves? And what did you learn from uh, that type of training and environment, I guess? About agile cooking is for everyone who really want to understand about agile or even about change or many, yeah. many things. I think I got inspiration from my mom, mm-hmm. my mom always asked me, what do you want to have for your breakfast tomorrow? <laughs> this is a good product owner, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I, so when, actually my agile cooking is for, for predicting people's behaviors at work. Mm-hmm. So I ask people like, okay, please cook whatever you, you prepare ingredients for this workshop, period. That's it. Really yeah. short instruction. <laughs> and people just, okay. <laughs> yeah, within a time box, like 10 minutes. And then they came back, here, my dish. Here, my dish, here, my dish, here, my dish. All right. And then I ask a question. Who did you cook for? <laughs> They're like, for you, damn. For my friends, four, 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 four. And I said, oh, you don't really know who your customers are, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's the first part. Yeah. <laughs> and I answered them like, oh, uh, your customer is me. And some people complain. You didn't tell us clearly in your instruction. And then I replied, you didn't ask. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's your behavior at work, right? When your boss or someone tell you to do something, not clearly, you didn't even ask them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in details. Or you didn't even ask whom you are working for. Mm-hmm. And they became quiet. 
<laughs> but that's also <laughs> like you know uh um uh i i've read somewhere recently that the assumption is like the biggest uh i think they use some kind of uh, <laughs> uh bad word to describe it but like like um in a way like you know we, assumption is the is uh the root of a lot of issues a lot of problems and in that instance you know and uh, like you said it's it's it, that assumption about who the customer is uh, is everywhere in business like you know we don't fully understand who the customers are we build stuff we uh we develop stuff i recently worked with uh with a client where i came in and i realized that uh a senior executive has asked uh three teams to work an initiative to uh f that they thought is going to impress the client and keep the client and these three teams busted their butts they were working really hard trying to uh you know meet the deadline and everything and then when they delivered the client actually ended up going to their competitor and they it turned out that they even need you know there was a huge assumption made by this vp that the this customer wants this and that this would keep the customer so people were so deflated understanding that they their leader made a huge assumption that this was important and this is what the customer wanted without validating they were working on this and then realizing that all the hard work wasn't really yeah. you know uh what they thought it would be just because of yeah. an assumption yeah actually it's good to work to start working from assumption by the way your customers are over there just go out to ask them that's it mm -hmm. right it's easy and besides uh this i call a trap <laughs> so yeah. there are many traps in my uh adult cooking uh, and then after after ask them to cook and then I all right are you ready for feedback yeah I'm gonna test you out food <laughs> and then I became I became really bad to tell them uh direct feedback and for some people who were not ready for feedback they started being mad yeah. and talk like nonstop and they defended for my feedback one lady she defend she defended great she defended for the whole day yeah, yeah. about my feedback until the last minute she came to me and she said thank you so much for your lesson i wanted to listen to other people more and more to become a better me yeah and become a better so, listener become to do and that's yeah. a huge thing about you know taking feedback and uh i remember when i used to ask for feedback and then get pissed off <laughs> when yes. people give me feedback <laughs> <laughs> yeah people actually people are not ready for that and yeah. i tried cooking uh for the first thing that i created and then i went oh i studied from lali uh lali fk my agile coach in San Francisco, he told me about mm -hmm. a leader is a gardener. <gasps> what is that? A leader is a gardener. What is that? I don't I didn't <laughs> I didn't understand at the time. So I asked him in details. And he told me in details and then all right, I wanna uh share my agile experience with executives by asking them to make uh a garden on a tray, mm -hmm. uh in a pot or something like that. And then, yeah, I have many traps for leaders to learn by getting their hand dirty from making uh, <laughs> a park, right? Yeah. And the the last point, yeah, everyone, everyone wears or proud of their beautiful gardens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they build it by their hands, by the love, by the cares, and then I told them a big plastic bag and then i ask them you have 30 seconds to destroy your garden now <laughs> people are like why i need to do it no i'm not going to do it no no it's too beautiful no no just only i think from doing this around the world i think not over than 10 people did it right away immediately and i asked them why 
you did that. You didn't ask even the objective. Should I tell your answer? <laughs> <laughs> Those people answer this question by saying like, it's better to disrupt my business by myself. And I don't let my competitors or other people to do it. Do it, yeah. It's more painful. <laughs> Thank you to the point. <laughs> As a leader, yeah, you yeah, see man. many people, many people are addicted to their success, and they mm -hmm. don't want to change. Mm -hmm. We get too yeah. comfortable, right? And uh, it's also, um, you know, hard because it is comfortable, and you know, as humans, we're designed to preserve the energy and all of that. Unless you know, we feel threatened, and when you're in a safe place. Um, yeah, that that success is beautiful. That's yeah. why they want to just hold it. They don't want to let it go. Many people mm -hmm. ask me, why, why you made a decision to leave your career in agile in Thailand and you went to the U.S. and now I now we see your growth in Thailand that could be like mm -hmm. 10 times, and I told them like, that's my comfort zone. That's my success, and I want to disrupt myself again. I did for the first time in 2014, yeah. and I'm doing it again in 2021. Yeah. That is awesome. So maybe I wanted to also ask you, since you brought it up, what do you see the differences between maybe mindset, culture, and how agile is adopted in Asia or Thailand, maybe, I don't know, um, and how it's adopted uh, here in the United States? Is there any differences? Is there anything that you see that you you know uh, having exposure to both uh, that stands out to you? When we see at a skin, uh, everywhere they have their own unique, they have their own styles. Mm -hmm. But when we look deeply and deeply, and from uh, traveling around the world, yeah, we are human. So all of us resist being changed actually we accept changes okay we accept changes but when we get to the point that we are we are asking to change or we are being changed we try to resist mm -hmm. first and then people try to tell us about logical thinking logical reasons we try to listen. By the way, at the end of the day, even though we got logical thinking, logical reasons, we go back home. We, be, we become a human with emotions again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so everywhere we are humans, so we are the same. So we resist being shamed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that, and you know, that, that lot of times, um, you know, when you look at leadership and I'm working with executives, um, you know, there's a lot of people, uh, you know, imposing change on others, yet they don't want to change. So like, you know, a lot of times it's like do agile, you know, a lot of these transformations are being imposed in many different ways. And then when we look at, you know, leaders, do they want to change themselves? And when you look at, you know, uh, like you said, you have to kind of be mindful about your own actions and what you're doing. A lot of that is not, you know, reflected on the leadership. And I was recently talking to Evan from uh, Business uh, uh, Business uh, Agility Institute. And uh, uh -huh. I was, uh, uh, who else I was talking to? Essentially a lot of data points to uh, leadership in organization, like as far as their ability to change, adapt to change, business agility, it points out to lack of uh, willingness at the leadership level to change. And, uh, you know, what you're just saying, you know, made it, made me think about that aspect where, you know, we want others to change, but yet when it comes to changing ourselves, it's hard. And probably as a monk and a mindful person that you are, you know, that change starts within and first with us rather than others. So, do you think like there is that, you know, something that's common and I'm assuming you alluded to that, that it's leadership, doesn't matter where you are, it's also leadership 
that a lot of times is impeding change in organization. And some of these changes where maybe humans are a little bit more liberated at work and <laughs> feeling better about what they, you know, uh, their work is. I was just looking maybe just to add to this. Uh, it's November uh, uh, 2021. And it's the, it was, I think so the, the this month or past month was the biggest uh, month where people just quit in the United States. And, and that has to do a lot with the environment and the leadership in organization. So what do you think on that like aspect of leadership and where it is and you know is it same in asia as well as in north america that it's leadership that's the you know probably from la luz i'm assuming you're familiar with la luz uh frederick la luz work from reinventing organizations where he said like we can only go as far as the leaders in organizations will allow us do you think that's true i think it's true because yeah. uh it's easy to to ask other people to change. Mm -hmm. And when you need to change yourself, you still resist, right? Mm -hmm. And you have many excuses not to do it. Mm -hmm. So I see many people who, who are change agents, who are uh, executives, who are managers. They, they are not successful of changing themselves and they try to tell other people you have to change them and i looked at i looked back like hmm? <laughs> hmm? yeah for example uh they try to many people try to tell us hey exercise get exercise yeah and when i look back to them like did you exercise yesterday or even this morning yeah before telling me to do that so it's better to change uh ourselves yeah to be a better uh to be a better one first before telling other people to do it that view mm -hmm. that a role model and it's and and when you be a role model when you tell other people to I, I don't want to say that tell other people to change. When you support other people to change, mm -hmm. when you speak, your voice is, is something there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you have done it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your body language, your eyes. Yeah, everything is, is there yeah, from your body when you mm -hmm. try to support other people to change. But if you have never done before, your even your voice is kind of like so. Well, it goes energized. back to that you know ninety percent of what we communicate, wanted or not wanted, is nonverbal. So, uh, it, like you said, you know, it's it's your body language, it's the way you know tone of the voice or whatever it is. Um, all that combination is. Um, what do you uh, maybe just to uh, see here from your perspective, like, what do you think, you know, where is agile going? Where, where, where have you seen it? Like uh, from my, you know, I've talked to Dave Snow and I've talked to like the biggest names in agile. And uh, I wanted to know what their thoughts are. Uh, you know, people have been saying that agile and scrum is dead <laughs> for the last 20 years, 10 years at least. Um, what I'm seeing and what they've, kind of alluded to is that you know uh contextualizing things and you know not being so uh, dogmatic about you know what framework you're actually applying but being able to to go back to cooking and uh, uh analogy that i use is you know coming up with our own recipes rather than relying you know even on scrum uh, and being dogmatic about you know, have everything has to be scrum or kanban but contextualizing uh, approaches uh, and methods and frameworks to your environment. Do you, what is your thought on on that? Like in a sense of where do you see these scaling frameworks um, uh, methods in general uh, heading uh, into? Do you think we'll will more and more be reliant on these prescriptive frameworks, or do you think I, it's going to go somewhere in some other direction? I think. Uh, 
I think some people are going to the wrong direction, and some people are going to the right direction. So for people who are going to the right direction, I see, uh, all of them to help other people to realize that they are suffering from the part that they are now. Mm -hmm. If we help people to to see their suffer, what they are doing is suffer. And make other people unhappy. If they can realize that, mm -hmm. and then wake them up, mm -hmm. wake them up, and help them to find root causes, and then uh, help them to have better actions, how to deal with that. For example, we have we have a lot of things to do. Right, and one one person uh, joined many projects. Mm -hmm. So that person should speak up because that's their suffer. But that person doesn't speak up because they don't because he or she doesn't realize that's his or her suffer. Mm -hmm. Even though many people try, even a scrum master and a child coach try to help uh, him or her that hey that. That's not right, but but she or he doesn't know that that's their suffering, and yeah. they try to resist even though we we try to help them, or uh, a manager or managers who doesn't know how to prioritize work. That's why they go around to tell many people to do many things at the same time, and mm -hmm. they don't realize that. They are making other people unhappy, and they mm -hmm. are making other people don't really have time to their family members. So I think as a an agile coach, a scrum master should help people to realize that what they are doing is is suffer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then maybe have so. Uh, what I'm hearing you say is it's uh, first before even I mean we you know look at you know the methods approaches frameworks whatever mm -hmm. just you know getting people to realize whatever you're doing you know to have the courage first of all to realize but then to have the courage you know this is not working and this is uh you know let's find a better way whatever that better way is let's find a better way to work um because I, I i see and the reason that i bring it up uh, is I see a lot of developers suffer under Scrum because either way that it's adopted or they it's not just uh, you know uh, working for them and like you said they're suffering because maybe of their own perceptions maybe or whatever that you know how it's posing them and just that even Scrum value <laughs> of courage and saying you know but a lot of people just go with the flow either for whatever reasons either you know it's uh, um, you know security some type of fear or whatever it is um, okay so I, I don't know if you answered my question but I think you did in a way that you're saying uh, it's more on uh, first of all realizing whatever uh, uh, framework or method you're adopting that is it working for you? Are you suffering or not? And then coming up with something that <laughs> were you happier? <laughs> were you better? Yeah. 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 But but people 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 feel people feel it, but mm -hmm. people people are not brave enough to speak up like, hey, it doesn't work. And I'm not happy now. And I want to have better ways of living, of working. Hey come and meet and sit and discuss <laughs> to find better ways to work together yeah that's a, that's but a good people <laughs> people don't do that mm -hmm. yeah many factors yeah and that's them. probably has to do with outside cultural factors too as you know like you know in certain cultures like for <laughs> i joke around but you know south southern italians people where i'm from in the balkans will tell you to your face you know <laughs> go screw yourself or this is bullshit <laughs> Uh, in some cultures, that's not just not part of the culture. So outside culture has to has an impact on on that you know uh, individual behaviors as well. What's acceptable and what's not. So it becomes harder in those type of cultures for people to speak up. Yeah, that's why we need support from uh, managers, leaders, 
and many people around to uh, to construct a safe safe environment for mm -hmm. people to speak their mind. Mm -hmm. That's a good yeah, idea. no punishment. Yeah, and just that's yeah, so just people to 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 be able to comfortable in that to have that psychological safety. Um, yeah. What would you like to share? We're almost, we're 15 minutes in, I think, or something like that. Um, what would you like to forend? What would you like to share uh, with the listeners? Uh, 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 either a message, a tip, anything that you would like to leave us with? I would like to share your life is too short. You have time limited for your life. Please prioritize what you need to do yeah and get rid of whatever make your life unhappy yeah of your way that help you to uh be a better you and for being this stage actually you can apply many ideas tools yeah whatever from agile from scrum from many frameworks or even from Lean manufacturing from Six Sigma to help you to get there. For example, lean manufacturing. Yeah, lean manufacturing teaches us to get rid of waste. So we have to understand the whole system. Yeah, at work we have to understand the whole change. Yeah, where mm -hmm. wastes are, and how about your life? What are you wasting your time for? Get rid of them and then come back to make your life productive. Yeah, SMS at work. Yeah, get rid of waste and then yeah, make your work more productive, right? And when we talk about Six Sigma, <laughs> when we talk about Six Sigma, Six Sigma offers many tools for problem solving. At work, we have many problems yeah, and we have many tools like 5S, fishbone analysis, for train analysis. We can use all of them to help us to find root causes and set up corrective action, creative action, and proactive action at work. And at mm -hmm. the same time, having said that, your life is too short and our life has many problems and we shouldn't let problems occur again and again. So we can use many tools from lane manufacturing and Six Sigma to find root causes and prevent many uh, situations. Unhappy See? situations. <laughs> yes. See, so we can apply many tools for our work and our life at the same time because our life is too short.